Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ryan with RNG Products and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these really cool, rustic looking farmhouse shelves. These are very versatile and you can use them in a multitude of situations that fit your needs. All right, you guys, for this project, I'm going to be using everybody's favorite wood, and that's going to be the 1x6 white wood or select pine that you can pick up from any of your big box stores. And like with all projects, once you have your dimensions, you're going to go ahead and cut all your dimensional lumber down to its final size. Right here, I simply set up a stop on my miter saw so that all my lengths came out identical. The final size for my floating shelves will be 31 inches long, 6 inches deep, and 4 inches tall. So right here you see me cutting the 1x6 down to the 4 inch size. Next up I grabbed my digital angle finder and tilted that saw blade to a perfect 45 degrees. Now I'm a big fan of using a feather board when running long miter cuts through the table saw like this. It does a great job at keeping the pressure on that lumber up against that fence so it doesn't pull away from the fence at the tail end of the cut. Okay now that we have all of our pieces cut to length We've put a 45 on the top and the bottom. The back edge is going to be flat because that's what's going to go up against the wall. And then remember, the center section, we put a 45 on both sides. That's going to allow us to build our floating shelf when we put the bottom on like so. Now we need to talk about the end caps. Obviously the ends are flat. We need to put some 45s on the end. So let's jump back over to the table saw and I'm going to show you my setup and how I get that done. All right, so here's what my setup looks like for getting 45s on the end of this board. Lucky for me, I do own this Incra Miter 5000. I love it, it comes in handy when uh, working on projects like this. If you don't own one of these, if you have a cross cut sled with a table saw at a 45 degree, you could do that as well. Worst case scenario, if you only own a jigsaw, you could crank that to 45 degrees. And if you have a compound miter saw, miter saw, you can also kick that over 45 degrees. So there's a couple different ways to tackle it. You don't have to have this. Um, but what I really like about it is I know I've got a nice parallel straight fence right here. I've got a stop down here on the end, so every piece of material I put in here, I'm going to put it right up against the stop, and then I've got a nice clamp right here that's going to hold my, uh, hold my wood really tight. Now keep in mind, all of these pieces are the same length, so for my first series of cuts, I'm just going to put each piece in, cut one end off, and then I'm going to have to reposition the stop block and finish cutting the rest. So let's get right to it. All right, cool. Now that we've completed cutting all of our 45s, let me just give you a quick preview of how this is gonna go together. So a nice little trick when trying to put 45 degree joints together is to use some painter's tape and lay a strip on the back side, and then that's gonna allow you to just fold these pieces up like this. So as you can see, we're basically, we're using all those 45s to create ourselves like a faux mantle. That's basically what this is. We're gonna put our, we're gonna put the end caps on the end after we get this all glued up. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna mount this to the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and use what's called a French cleat, and this is gonna be a hidden French cleat. Now, if you don't know what a French cleat is, I'm gonna link a video below. I did a whole video on how I built my big French cleat wall. So after you watch this video, go check that one out. And if you're enjoying this content, do me a huge favor, just smash that like button. That really helps out a lot. Although the word hidden French cleat sounds really fancy, all you're doing is taking some three-quarter stock and rip it down at a 45, and then that's just going to give you two pieces like you can see here, and when one's mounted to the wall, the other can slip right in and hold on that joint. And like I said, watch my video below for a, a detailed explanation. Right here, I'm simply using some wood glue and 18-gauge brad nails to secure the French cleat to the top of the shelf. Now, two tips for you. Make sure you install the French cleat prior to taping up the miter joints and gluing up the floating shelf. You also want to make sure you leave enough room that that shelf can fit over the cleat that you're going to mount on the wall. Once I had the French cleat secured with brad nails and glue, I went ahead and took a 3 8 inch Forstner bit and drilled into the top of the shelf. I then used a small drill bit and created a pilot hole down into the French cleat and then used a 1 inch drywall screw to secure that French cleat in place nice and tight. Then I simply took a 3 8 inch dowel rod and cut down a few small pieces, filled those holes with wood glue and then set that dowel piece inside. As you'll see a little bit later, I will then take a flush cut trim saw and cut these nice and flush and sand them down. I personally don't like the look of exposed screws on a project like this, 
So I took the extra time and utilized this neat little method you see here. Now these flush trim saws come in a variety of makes, models, and price points. Now since I rarely use this type of saw on my projects, I went ahead and picked up this cheap one you see here from Harbor Freight. It works really well for the price point. Just be aware, the blades will dull really fast. Now since this is going to be a rustic distressed piece, I was not concerned with the saw cutting into my material. Now if you want a nice clean look, you can always apply painter's tape around the dowel and that'll prevent the saw from digging in to a nice surface. When gluing up joints like this, I will flip my boards over so the miter joint is facing down. I'll get the edges flush and then use two small pieces of tape just to tack them in place, then run a full strip across the length of the board. Fold it over and give it a quick test fit. Once I'm satisfied, I'll apply a liberal amount of glue and make sure I spread it within the seams nice and even. Then simply fold the miter joints together and use an 18 gauge brad nailer to secure everything in place until that wood glue dries. Okay, just a quick sanity check for you guys. Now I'm located in southwestern Idaho and I don't know about your local big box store, but we must get the leftovers because when you're buying this cheap white wood or select pine, it's almost impossible to find a nice straight board and you're gonna to have to do some finessing when working on projects like this. I don't see a lot of other YouTube creators talk about it and quite frankly, some of their uh, lumber they're using actually looks pretty good. So just wanted to kind of show you what I'm gonna do here. Um, this was kind of redundant, so I already went ahead and cut my end caps and put the miters on them. So here's the deal. We already know what the dimensions of the floating shelf are. I've got, this is gonna be four inches from here to here. And then my width from here to here is five and a half. So all I did was I cut my, my end cap to four by five and a half and I put my miters on it. So here's the trick. Even though we put those 45s right here and we taped it up and when we folded it up, you know, as that glue settles, you're, you're gonna get some settling. You know, when it, as the glue is drying, you're gonna get some settling. So right now, this floating shelf, doubt you can see it on the camera, but it, it, it's kind of hanging out. But since we already know it's four by five and a half, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take these clamps, I'm gonna put one right here in the middle. I'm just gonna start to squeeze that in, bring another clamp in down here, I'm going to put that on the end, and again, we already know we, we need four inches. That's, the, that's the, the thickness of this shelf. So all I'm going to do is squeeze my clamp into four inches. Now I've brought that in, and that's going to allow for that end cap to fit in there really nice. So that's just a little trick. If your lumber's not real straight, don't freak out. You already know what your dimensions are. We've already cut everything straight. Just use some clamps and give it a little extra love. So now that the glue is dried, I went ahead and removed my clamps and I want to touch on something I talked about earlier in the video and that's the quality of the lumber. Now if this wasn't a rustic or a farmhouse style project, I would have spent the extra money and bought some of the select pine that they sell in the store, or if I wanted to get fancy, I would have got some rough cut, um, like some walnut or mahogany, and I would have jointed and face planed everything so that I had really nice straight and square boards, but I didn't do that. So if you are planning on doing a project like this with the cheap white wood, you will most likely have some joints that don't fit real well. So we're gonna go ahead and address that. It's something I expect on every single one of these projects, and uh, this is how I fix mine. As you saw earlier, we shot the brad nails in, so that's a simple fix. But where we have a little bit of an issue, probably really hard to tell, but you're gonna see up here, I got a pretty good gap over here. So my favorite product to use is this Minwax Stainable Wood Filler. And uh, all you're gonna do is take a tiny little dab, put it on your finger, find your little brad nail holes, just press it in there and kind of wipe it clean. Quick pro tip, it takes a very small amount. The more you pack in that hole and leave on the surface, it's just that much more sanding you have to do. So literally just press down hard, wipe away from you, and then you can even come back over it and wipe it clean. And that's gonna be very minimal sanding. But when you get to the bigger gaps, you're just gonna have to load it up and get it in there. So now that I have all that rough sanding done, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick time lapse. 
and we're going to start laying this putty down in all the voids that I have. Once your putty sets up and is dry, you're going to hit it with a sander again. I'll spare you that. We all know what sanding looks like. Now for the fun part, time to distress these shelves. You can use anything you have on hand to achieve any type of desired finish you would like. As you can see here, I simply used a hammer and a couple other different types of metal objects I had laying around the workshop. The sky's the limit, get as creative as you want here. Now anytime I stain pine, I always use Minwax pre-stain. This will ensure you get a nice even coat. For this project, I'll be using Varathane and the color is Briar Smoke. Simply apply the proper amount until you get the desired finish you're looking for. I really like combining the look of distressed wood with metal. I came up with a cheap alternative to create these straps. I went ahead and purchased a very thin sheet of aluminum from my big box store. I determined a two inch strip would look great on my shelves. I then attached a cutoff wheel to my grinder and used that painter's tape as a guideline. Once I had all my pieces cut, I used my belt sander to knock the burrs off the edges and a quick finish with some 220 grit sandpaper to knock that shine off the aluminum. In order to form the shapes, I simply clamped my aluminum strip to the shelf and then used a soft rubber mallet to form it around the mantle, then over to the bandsaw to trim off the excess. With the aluminum now prepped for paint, I went ahead and used this Rust-Oleum hammered paint. And in order to seal and protect these shelves, I went ahead and chose polycrylic in a matte finish, applied a couple coats with a light sanding in between. With my shelves now sealed, it's time to install the straps, but first we need to drill a couple holes in the straps. While shopping at the hardware store, I came across these really cool nails that look like they were forged by a blacksmith. They're actually just carpet nails and they fit the piece perfectly. Well guys, unfortunately we are at the end of the video. Now let's go ahead and take a cinematic look at what this project looks like complete and mounted up on the wall. And as always, if you guys have made it this far into the video, I truly do appreciate your support. And if you guys do enjoy this type of content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That really helps the channel grow. And if you'd like to see a different type of project filmed and put up here on my channel, drop a comment below and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.